This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. Check out the new YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, at youtube.com slash UCTV Prime. Subscribe today to get new programs every week. Earthquake, a certainty in California. In fact, a strong shaking event of about magnitude six is likely to happen every three years somewhere in California. And in some of the most densely populated areas of the state, the potential for a truly devastating earthquake is a certainty. As we know, this has been borne out throughout history and throughout the state. From the great earthquake of 1906 to Northridge, from Eureka to Long Beach, from Loma Prieta to Silmar, earthquakes have wreaked destruction on Californians' lives, livelihoods, and civic infrastructure, including some of our most critical and essential facilities, hospitals. The 1971 Silmar quake destroyed two hospitals and claimed over 50 lives. California responded, improving codes and standards, making our hospitals safer. However, in 1994, the Northridge earthquake still had a devastating impact on hospitals, causing non-structural damages that forced many of them out of operation just when they were needed most. And as always, Californians again responded, improving the requirements for the safety and continued operation of our hospitals. With a devastating earthquake in our future, California has continued to improve requirements to ensure the safety and reliability of our hospitals. And now, the California Seismic Safety Commission is supporting an unprecedented project that promises to ensure that those efforts are effective at securing the future of our hospitals. There's a truly unique test that's um, in the making at University of California, San Diego. Uh, they're building a five-story building on a shake table. No one's ever built anything of this magnitude before. The building will emulate a hospital complete with a, a surgical suite. And the intent is, once the building is completed, to shake the building until it begins to fail. The commission is helping fund the tests. The commission will help publicize the results of the test. We can identify what parts are as strong as people thought they would be, what may be stronger than they thought they would, and what may be weaker than they thought they would. And it will not only test the building, but it will test the contents of the building. The other thing that we'll do with this building when, after the shaking is done, uh, is to set, set it on fire. This is an opportunity for us to try to find out how a fire will behave in a building that has been damaged by a seismic event. It's important to realize that the day will come when we will have a major earthquake in our state and it will significantly disrupt an entire region of the state. As a result of that, we need the hospitals to be physically strong enough um, inside and out, to be able to withstand the shaking and continue functioning. To achieve these goals, the National Science Foundation and the California Seismic Safety Commission have brought together an extraordinary consortium of engineers, designers, and scientists from across the country and around the world on this project. What is being tested? How will it be accomplished? and how will we benefit? What we're doing here is we're constructing a full-scale building outfitted with non-structural components and systems. That by itself is completely unique. We're providing a complete exoskeleton to the building composed of heavy precast concrete panels, um, balloon frame metal studs overlaid with a synthetic stucco, uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing subsystems integrated throughout the building. 
where integrating components such as a fully functioning elevator, select floors of the building strategically outfitted as medical floors, namely a surgery suite and an intensive care unit. Passive and active fire systems such as sprinklers at every level of the building and fireproofing. This is completely unique compared to other building test programs. While this unprecedented program will test and compare different non-structural strategies, it will also compare two types of buildings. First, by testing a building with devices called base isolators. First, we're isolating the building from the intense uh, shakings by placing large rubber bearings under the structure. After testing the building and its components with base isolators, they will be removed and the building will be shaken with a fixed foundation, typical of many buildings in use today. Once the seismic shaking tests are complete, the project will perform another suite of never before conducted observations. This is the first time we've had the opportunity to test a building under fire loading after it has been seismically shaken. We're subjecting strategic locations to local burn tests. We're hoping to learn quite a bit from these tests in terms of not only the installation side so that we design hangers and flexible joints correctly, but also in terms of looking at compartmentation and fire stop to see if they will actually be in place as expected following an earthquake. This entire project would not be possible without the unique capabilities of the high-performance shake table at UC San Diego's Engelkirk Structural Engineering Center. This huge mechanical table designed to recreate earthquake motions is the largest shake table in the Western Hemisphere. These tests can only be done here at UC San Diego. Here at the Engelkirk Center, we have a unique facility we are in an outdoor condition. We have a very large shaking table and we, we have no space restrictions. So here we can go uh, 100 feet or even taller than that. This building is about 80 feet tall. So we can build uh, buildings like the ones I have behind for this project. The table will recreate motions from some of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded, carefully selected for their intense shaking characteristics. The ground motions uh, have been selected from uh, large earthquakes. We are using an earthquake from Chile, magnitude 8.8. .8. We're also looking into a record from Peru, from a subduction earthquake. It's a magnitude 8 earthquake, very large. And for the fixed space condition, we're looking at uh, one of the largest earthquakes in, in recent years in the United States is the uh, magnitude 7.9 Denali earthquake. The Denali motion is of interest to us because it's of the kind of motions we will expect to see in central and, and southern California because it's very long shaking. So it keeps going and going and going. So it's intense and long. The um, um, subduction earthquakes that come from South America are the kind of earthquakes we expect to see more in northern California, like Crescent City, Eureka, and the Cascadia region that is in front of the uh, coast of northern California. Through all these records, from top to bottom, inside and out, the building and its non-structural elements will be thoroughly instrumented in order to rigorously record evidence of what happens during the intense shaking to which it will be subjected. There will be somewhere between five and 600 channels of data from different uh, sensors. And we will have accelerometers, we will have two types of accelerometers, so 250 channel of accelerometers that will measure the acceleration response of the structure at various points. Then we have 280 potentiometers to measure relative displacement between two points. And then we have strain gauges that allow us to measure the deformation in the rebars that are buried in the concrete, so these have to be installed when we have only the rebar cages before even we pour the concrete. Also, we'll have some load cells to measure force uh, in anchors. There will also be some GPS receivers 
to measure the displacement of the specimen relative to a reference point. We will have 50 cameras focusing on non-structural elements. It will have significant impact in how we model the non-structural components to calculate the anchor forces and what forces they, they need to resist during an earthquake so that in the future when we design them, we can design, design them right. Through years of planning and preparations, every element of the building, from the smallest connector to the concrete beams, from the elevator to the huge chiller unit, has been carefully conceived by an extraordinary consortium of the world's foremost experts to gain the most relevant and useful information about the effects of an earthquake on all the non-structural parts of a hospital building. Will the test succeed? And how will we benefit? There hasn't really been a test like this. If we can actually take some of these systems uh, to at or near failure, you can learn a lot about how that failure mechanism uh, starts, and then you can design ways to uh, just delay or mitigate that failure mechanism. I, I don't see how this test can fail to succeed because we're going to get great actionable information on the performance of non-structural systems. I chair the Building Standards uh, Commission, so this particular project is really important as far as I'm concerned because we have earthquakes on a regular basis, and the one place we need to be in really good shape are the hospitals. And so this is a great opportunity because it is the practical application. It's, it says, how can we do this better? How can we develop codes for hospitals that will ensure that everything that's in a hospital continues to operate afterwards? We're doing what we need to do here and we're gonna do it right. Soon, the table will be put in motion and through intense shaking and fire, floor by floor, from the elevator to the roof, from the surgical suite to the intensive care unit, every ceiling panel, pipe, duct, conduit, doorway, and wall will reveal never-before-known insights about what actually happens in a hospital during a severe earthquake, giving us the knowledge to best ensure their operations when they will be needed most.